Hi. In this presentation, I talk about Handshake's competitors because I notice a lot of confusion with others trying to understand them. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. The first competitor is Unstoppable Domains. So what do they do? They let you buy second-level domains. These are names in front of .zil and .crypto. Unstoppable Domains has a grant from the Zillica Foundation, which is why they own .zil, and they have a grant from the Ethereum Foundation, which is presumably why they own .crypto. So do they have their own token? Nope. Unstoppable Domains supports many different types of cryptocurrencies for payment, but they don't have their own native token. So what are they focused on? Unstoppable Domains is mostly focused on wallets and applications. This requires a lot of business development work to get these integrations. So how do you access their domains? Well, you have to use a special mirroring service, which is a browser extension or a browser that supports blockchain domains. So to recap, Unstoppable Domains offers second-level domains like sam.zil or sam.crypto. They accept many cryptocurrencies, but they don't have their own token, and they're focused on wallets and applications. You need a special browser or, or a browser extension to view their domains. Now let's get into ENS. According to their website, ENS offers a secure and decentralized way to address resources both on and off the blockchain using simple, human-readable names. So you can see below, instead of that 0x, dot, 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 whatever, uh, you can get something that doesn't have that long address, but something like alice.mywallet.eth. So does ENS have its own token? Nope. New names are allocated using an auction process based on a Vickery auction. And that's how uh, ENS handles the process. So what are they focused on? Again, just like Unstoppable Domains, ENS is focused on wallets and applications, and you can see this on their website. And how can you access ENS domains? Same as before, you also need a wallet or an application that's supported by ENS. So to recap, ENS offers second-level domains like hello.eth or goodbye.eth. They use a Vickery auction for .eth domains. Uh, they don't have their own native token, and they're focused on wallets and applications, and you need a dApp or a wallet to view ENS domains. One key fact to keep in mind about ENS is that the root key holders is maintained by seven people. So ENS is not exactly decentralized, although Nick Johnson and the team have plans to do so in the future, as mentioned here on their website. Now let's talk about Blockstack. Blockstack is a platform to build decentralized applications, much like Ethereum. One of their features is to offer a universal login with an ID. So do they have their own token? Well, they do, but it's not needed to create a block stack ID. STX tokens are used as gas like ETH on the block stack blockchain. Now, if you dive into their FAQ like I did, you can see that uh, users can get a free block stack ID. So that would be something like what they put here, meepers.id.blockstack. Um, and that's what you would get. But if you wanted something like dot id or dot frank um, there is a small cost in bitcoin according to their website but it's not exactly clear how you can get that and when i tried this myself this is what a free account looks like so it says bob all these numbers and then it says dot id dot block stack so what's block stack focusing on block stack is mostly focusing on trying to be an ethereum killer you know, you could see all over their website, they talk about building apps and providing features that make it easy to do so. Identity is just one of those features. So how can you access Blockstack domains? You need to use the Blockstack browser. Um, so you could download that for Mac or Windows, 
or you could use the browser web, uh, which doesn't require anything to be downloaded. Now, the downside of this approach is that if you use just their web browser, then you still have to create an ID to view their browser-based apps. And after you do, this is what the website looks like. So to recap for Blockstack, they offer second-level domains like bob.id.blockstack, and they may offer top-level domains like .frank, but it's not exactly clear how. Uh, they have second-level domains uh, which are free, and STX, their native token, is not required to get a Blockstack domain. They're mostly focused on apps, and you need to download software or create an ID to view their apps. Lastly, let's talk about Namecoin. According to their website, Namecoin was the first fork of Bitcoin and is still one of the most innovative altcoins. It was first to implement merge mining and a decentralized DNS. And that sounds a lot like Handshake. So what do the Handshake founders think of Namecoin? Well, according to the Handshake notes, they said that the pioneers of naming uh, cryptocurrencies include Namecoin, ENS, and Blockstack. Namecoin's model requires a user to run a fully validating node in order to securely resolve names. Although Namecoin was the first cryptocurrency project to attempt to implement a DNS bridge for a cryptocurrency naming protocol, the protocol itself is lacking in the area of SPV. And the last part they said um, in another section of the note says, however, we submit that this is an acceptable risk due to the benefits of proof of work offers in the way of SPV. Our protocol is not usable in practice without proper SPV proofs. In other words, if you think about it, the Handshake founders felt that Namecoin lacked SPV proofs, which is one of the reasons why it hasn't succeeded. Uh, you have to run a full node basically to use Namecoin, whereas with Handshake you don't. So does Namecoin have their own token? They definitely do. So remember, Namecoin was an old uh, Bitcoin OG altcoin fork, and you can see this here on CoinMarketCap. So what does Namecoin focus on? Well, on their website, they say, Bitcoin frees money, Namecoin frees DNS, identities, and other technologies. In other words, they have the same focus as Handshake. So how do you view Namecoin domains? Here's what's on their FAQ, uh, but in short, you have to download special software to view them. One last thing I wanted to point out is that Namecoin never had something like Namebase, which is an easy to use interface to buy, sell, and use Handshake. Think of Namebase like Coinbase plus GoDaddy. So to recap, Namebase, excuse me, Namecoin offers top-level domains. They have their own token, uh, but they don't have SPV proofs, and they don't have an easy-to-use interface like Namebase. And they're focused on top-level domains like .com, .org, etc. And you need to download special software to view Namecoin domains. So now that we went through all those competitors, what does Handshake focus on? Handshake focuses on top-level domains like .com and .org. Handshake also has its own native token, HNS, which is used to buy and sell domains. To view Handshake domains, you need a DNS resolver. The killer feature of Handshake is that DNS resolvers are already everywhere. You just have to configure your system. You could run a full or SPV node or use a trusted HNS resolver. And NextDNS is also an option. So to recap, Handshake offers top-level domains like .com, .org, etc. And they have their own native token, HNS. And Handshake also has SPV proofs and an easy-to-use interface like Namebase.io. Their focus is mostly on top-level domains. And you don't need to download any special software to view Handshake domains although you could download and run full or SPV nodes if you want more security. Now, if you think about it, 
Handshake's real competitor is actually ICANN and certificate authorities, not really the other teams I mentioned earlier. And last but not least, here's a matrix graph I put together to make this easier to understand. And please note that it leaves out some technicals for simplicity. Uh, feel free to pause here if you like. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.